Hey everyone, my name is Nikki Young and this is Serial Napper, an international true crime podcast. I'm back with another true crime story to lull you to sleep or perhaps to give you nightmares. Right off the bat, I need to put out a trigger warning because tonight we will be discussing the death of a child who was killed in a child abuse type situation. As always, I'm going to be respectful to the victim with everything that we discuss here, but the death of a child is never a pleasant thing to talk about. Beautiful little 10-year-old Candace Elizabeth Newmaker had a difficult childhood right from the beginning. She came from a family that not only struggled with poverty, but her and her siblings would be taken away from their parents due to neglect. Everything was supposed to get better when she was adopted by a woman named Jeanne Elizabeth Newmaker. But according to Jeanne, Candace wasn't the child she thought she was adopting. She claimed that Candace was defiant and mischievous and completely distant and unattached from her. Instead of getting her any kind of real help, real professional help, Jeanne thought the new mother and daughter would best connect through a rebirthing ceremony. Only the ceremony didn't go as planned, and 10-year-old Candace wouldn't walk out of it alive. Let's jump into tonight's case. Before she was Candace Elizabeth Newmaker, she was actually named Candace Tiara Elmore. She was born on November 19, 1989, to her parents Angela and Todd Elmore in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Unfortunately, her parents were extremely neglectful and abusive towards her and her siblings. She would have experienced a lot of pain and violence in her early formative years, so as you can imagine, she carried a lot of trauma with her. When she was five years old, her parents lost custody of her and her siblings, so they were all sent to live at a foster home. Over the course of the next year, she would be bounced around from foster home to foster home until she was finally adopted at six years old by a single woman named Jeanne Elizabeth Newmaker. Jeanne was working as a pediatric nurse at the time of the adoption, and she was unmarried. She wanted a child to love and to love her back. Candace seemed like she would be the perfect fit in Jeanne's life, with her curly brown hair, her big blue eyes, and her adorable freckles. When the adoption was finalized, Jeanne changed Candace's full name from Candace Tierra Elmore to Candace Elizabeth Newmaker, meaning Candace would take both Jeanne's middle and last name. Unfortunately, it seems as if Jeanne had a completely different idea of what things were going to be like after the adoption went through. She envisioned the whole process being a happy occasion that would leave her feeling fulfilled. However, she didn't take into account the fact that she was adopting a little girl who had experienced violence and trauma for the majority of her short life. She had been ripped away from her siblings, who she used to rely on for emotional support, and she had been bounced around from home to home with absolutely no continuity. Candace had a difficult time adjusting in her new home. She appeared to be angry just about all of the time. She would break things and throw things. She refused to hug or show affection towards her new adoptive mother. Jeanne would note a few specific things that finally brought her to her breaking point. She claimed that over the years, Candace would show abusive behavior towards other children. She also said that she started a fire in the family home and that she had killed their pet goldfish. Jeanne would take her to see several different doctors and psychologists, all who would prescribe different therapy treatments and different medications, but according to Jeanne, none of this seemed to make any difference. It should be noted here that none of Candace's teachers, neighbors, or family friends would say that they ever witnessed the same behavior out of Candace. That's not to say that it didn't happen. Maybe she would have only been like that at home with her mother, Jeanne. We don't know, but all of these behavioral issues are according to her mother, Jeanne. In 1996, when Candace was seven years old, she was diagnosed by a psychiatrist with having reactive attachment disorder. 
According to the Mayo Clinic, reactive attachment disorder is a rare but serious condition in which an infant or young child doesn't establish healthy attachments with parents or caregivers. Reactive attachment disorder may develop if the child's basic needs for comfort, affection, and nurturing aren't met and loving, caring, stable attachments with others are not established. Some of the symptoms of reactive attachment disorder are behavioral problems, fear and sadness, and failure to seek comfort or support from others. It's not far-fetched to see why Candace would get this kind of diagnosis, even if it is a rare condition. There is proof that she grew up in a household where she was neglected. She didn't have her basic needs met, and beyond that, she was physically abused by the parents that were supposed to love and care for her. This is probably a common diagnosis amongst kids who grow up in foster care. They need therapy and help with trusting other people and building those foundations with new caregivers. According to the Mayo Clinic, Treatments for reactive attachment disorder include learning how to create a stable nurturing environment and providing positive child and caregiver interactions. Parents or caregiver counseling and education can help. To me, that sounds like the best way to help a child cope with this diagnosis is to continue to be a loving and supportive parent and to make small progress in those areas, even if it doesn't feel like a big change. Even though adoptive mom Jeanne was a nurse and would have been somewhat familiar with the kinds of resources she could access to help Candace, she decided to look into what I would call a bizarre and controversial type of therapy. Technically, it's a kind of attachment therapy, but according to psychologytoday.com, there are legitimate forms of attachment-based therapy that actually work to strengthen the bond and connection between people. However, these types of legitimate kinds of therapy, they should not be confused with the kind of therapy that Jeanne wanted to try, which is unconventional and harmful and has since been rejected by mainstream psychology. Jeanne wanted to try what is known as a rebirthing ceremony, and I personally cannot understand how anyone would think this is a good idea. She would attend a National Attachment Therapy Conference in Washington, D.C. While she was there, she met an attachment therapist. She was hoping that he would take her on as a patient because he was widely known in his community for his positive treatment programs. She filled out a questionnaire at his booth, checking off the boxes of all of the issues her newly adopted daughter was having. While Bill Gobble labeled Candace's symptoms as being fairly severe, he didn't have any availability in his schedule, so he referred Jeanne and Candace to two other therapists located in Colorado. In 2000, Jeanne made plans to visit the therapist in Colorado, the one who specialized in something called rebirthing. They claimed that this was a form of attachment therapy, But again, as I mentioned, Psychology Today says that most medical professionals are completely against it and actually think it's abusive. Jeanne would have to pay $7,000 to have Candace attend this treatment, which was located over 1,000 miles away from where they lived. She really thought that this was the solution to her problems with connecting with Candace. So she loaded her daughter in the car and they traveled across the country for a rebirthing ceremony. Welcome to Teen Girl Talk. Teen Girl Talk. I'm Susie Coda. I'm Frank Coda. And we are, we're a teen podcast. As we're covering teen movies, teen books, and teen TV shows. All things teen. Let's hear a little bit from us. Or this... oh, guess who I shit? Who? Voldemort and the Emperor. <laughs> I mean, it would be very stuttery, not stuttery, like very long-winded conversations where it feels like neither of them can just quite catch their breath. I mean, it would totally I be a think relationship. You look, I think you look very lovely tonight. Yes, you look lovely tonight too, Voldy. Okay, so I totally think they would be a toxic couple and their friends would be like, 
you guys make up and break up every other week. We can't take it anymore. And Voldemort would be like, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> He's so evil. I just can't quit him. Why? Teen Girl Talk can be found wherever you find your podcast. Check us out every Wednesday and Thursday. Now back to our story. Candace would be seen and treated by two supposed attachment therapists, Canal Watkins and Julie Ponder. Watkins was unlicensed at the time, while Julie was a licensed marriage and family therapist from California, but she was not licensed in the state that she was practicing. There would be several other people who would assist with the ceremony, but again, none of them were licensed. The only licensed individual in the whole room of people performing this treatment was Julie Ponder, and she wasn't even licensed in the state. They would operate their practice out of the basement of Connell Watkins' home. According to Jeanne, the first week of Candace's unorthodox treatment went well, and it appeared like her daughter was getting better. All of the sessions so far had been building up to this rebirthing ceremony that was going to culminate the whole treatment. But it would end in tragedy. On April 8th, 2000, Candace was going to experience her rebirthing ceremony. The whole thing would be recorded on videotape so that Jeanne and Candace could watch it later if they wanted to and re-experience this whole ceremony together. The idea of the rebirthing ceremony is to mentally bring the person back to when they were born into this world through their birth mother. This is supposedly achieved by putting the patient into a situation that mimics birth. This means that they feel the tight space and squeeze that simulates going through the birth canal. It makes the patient feel almost helpless, and when they finally break free of the womb, they're supposed to attach themselves to their new mother. If it sounds strange to you, don't worry, it sounds strange to me too. You're not alone. I have the full transcript of the video that I'm going to post in my show notes if you'd like to read through it. It's a really difficult read, but it's there if you want to have a look. Here is an overview of what was recorded. Candace is seen in the video drawing a picture on a board that is posted up on the wall. They begin talking about the ceremony, and adoptive mom, Jeanne Newbanker, says, I'm so excited. I'm going to have a brand new baby. I hope it's a girl. I'm going to love her, to hold her, and tell her stories. I'm going to keep her very safe. Every day, we'll be together, and she'll be with me forever. I don't know if it's just me, but this whole thing gives me the ick. I can understand an adoptive mother wanting to experience birth, but this whole situation is really nothing like going into labor and actually birthing a child. Candace continues to draw for around 30 minutes before her therapist, Julie Ponder, tells her that it is time to do the rebirthing ceremony. They tell Candace to lie on the floor in a fetal position, and then they wrap Candace's tiny body in a blue flannel sheet. Then they cover her with pillows. Again, this is all done to simulate the experience of being in the womb. Connell Watkins, the unlicensed therapist, along with two other adults, then walk into the room and they basically put the weight of their bodies on her. They tell Candace to quote-unquote fight to live, to squirm her way out of this cocoon that they have her in. Her adoptive mother, Jeanne, is watching nearby as all of this is done to Candace. She doesn't intervene at any time. It isn't long into the rebirthing ceremony, about eight minutes in, that Candace becomes distressed. She cries, and she says that she can't do it, and she can't breathe. She tells the adults lying on top of her that she feels like she's going to throw up. But the adults just yell back that she needs to escape on her own, that she needs to fight to live because she's not a quitter. One of the adults says, quote, Come out head first. You have to push really hard with your feet. If you stay in there, you're going to die and your mommy's going to die. Candace cries and screams, saying, quit pushing on me, please. Quit squishing my legs. I'm going to die now. And the therapist asks, do you want to die? 
Candace responds with, no, but I'm about to. Please, please, I can't breathe. The therapist then looks up at the adoptive mother, Jeanne, and asks, are you feeling the contractions, mom? And she responds with, I am. This carries on for a full 70 minutes as Candace is very slowly smothered and squished to death. She would vomit and defecate in the blanket while she was being held down inside of that sheet and under the pillows. Near the end of the ceremony, Candace becomes very quiet except for a few quiet whimpers and then absolutely no sounds come from her for 20 minutes as the adults continue to lie on top of her. Eventually, they take notice that Candace is no longer moving or making any sounds. It is Julie Ponder who unwraps her and finds that she has no pulse. She begins to perform CPR on the child as her adoptive mother, Jeanne, finally reacts and runs over screaming, she's dead. Someone on the video yells out to call 911 and then the video ends. Candace Newmaker would be airlifted to the hospital, but ultimately this little girl would pass away the following morning. Her cause of death was asphyxiation and her slow and agonizing murder was all captured on video. This disturbing footage would be played for the courts later, and as you can imagine, it was very difficult for the jury to watch. I'm not going to play it here, but I do have a clip from a similar session of so-called attachment therapy that I will play for you now. A quick warning, it can be really difficult to watch or listen to. Thankfully, we know that the child who was recorded in this specific clip survived their ordeal, unlike Candace. Alright, let's go. What happened? I'm not sure. You're not sure. I gave up. How about I gave up? See, this is your life. Yes. This is your life. Where are your eyes supposed to be? Yes. This is your life. You want to fight for your family? You want to stay in this family or not? Or should we just give up now? What do you want to do? You want to give up? You want to whine and moan? No. Well, what is it? Yes or no? No, Neil. Then say it like you mean it. No, Neil. No, Neil, what? Oh, is this the kind of stuff that you do all the time, huh? I forgot. I don't know. Play stupid. Poor, poor little Stevie. Huh? That's the kind of stuff. How'd it go last night for you? Not good, no. The way it usually goes, right? Because this is the way your life goes. How many times do you think I want to tell you to look in my eyes, huh? How many times do people have to tell you to do things? Mm. Oh, I don't know, Neil. How are you feeling right now? How'd you feel last night, huh? Scared. Scared? No. Did you act scared? When Mom told you not to come out of your room, what did you do? You're going to go into your whiny, wimpy routine now? Is that what you're going to do? If you don't start dealing with a man inside of you, you're going to kill somebody. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. As a mother, it's really difficult for me to imagine putting your child through something like this. I can understand how a mother might feel like they're at their wit's end when dealing with a troubled child. Like they need professional help. But these children, they're clearly in pain, in mental and physical pain. And violating them like this, well, it's not going to make them a better person. It's not going to help them to heal. Connell Watkins was charged with reckless child abuse, resulting in death. Therapist Julie Ponder, who was the only licensed professional in the room and yet did absolutely nothing to stop this, was also charged with reckless child abuse, resulting in death. The pair would receive 16-year prison sentences. Every bit of evidence that was needed to secure a conviction was right there in that video that they recorded themselves. There were two other unnamed individuals who were seen in the video participating in the ceremony by holding those pillows down on top of Candace. They were given 10 years probation for criminally negligent child abuse. 
As for Jeanne, the adoptive mother who was supposed to give this traumatized child a better life, she was charged with negligent child abuse leading to death. She was given a four-year suspended sentence, and eventually the charges were expunged from her record altogether. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I guess I truly don't believe that Jeanne meant to harm her daughter. She was struggling with Candace's severe behavioral issues, issues that really should be expected from a child who has experienced so much trauma in their life. She was at a loss of what to do, so much so that she paid $7,000 for this controversial therapy treatment, and she traveled across the country to do it. Let me be clear though, Jeanne is not innocent, not by a long shot. She was a registered nurse, so even if she wasn't familiar with psychological treatments, she should have known that wrapping a child so tightly in a blanket, putting pillows on top of them, and then having four adults use their body weight to hold the child down is really dangerous and could result in death. And yet, she was convinced by these therapists that they had a treatment that was going to work. Of course, rebirthing is not recognized at all by mental health care professionals, but the two women who were in charge of the ceremony told her that the other five previous successful sessions that they had done with clients, well, they worked. What they failed to mention, though, is that those other rebirthing ceremonies only lasted around six minutes long each, while Candace's lasted a whole 70 minutes before anyone realized that anything was wrong. Just about the only good thing to come out of all of this was a new law in Colorado and North Carolina called Candace's Law, where they have banned these dangerous rebirthing ceremonies. There has also been similar laws passed in other states so that other children just like Candace don't have to go through with this barbaric treatment. However, attachment therapy and rebirthing ceremonies are still practiced throughout the U.S. and the rest of the world, which is terrifying. There are so many people who failed Candace, starting with her parents who didn't pull it together and give this little girl and her siblings a safe and secure environment to thrive in. The foster system failed her because she was pulled away from her siblings and bounced from house to house. Her adoptive mother, Jeanne, failed her by not addressing her trauma in a safe and effective manner. Every single adult in that room, while Candace was slowly being suffocated, completely failed her. And then ultimately, the system failed her because they didn't provide adequate support and oversight in ensuring that Candace went to a safe and nurturing adoptive home. This never should have happened to Candace. She was not a bad or difficult child. She was a traumatized child that needed real professional help and a loving home to thrive in. Not another single person should ever have to experience what she did in her short time on earth. That's it for me tonight. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Facebook at Serial Mapper. You can also search for me on Apple or Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check me out on Twitter at Serial underscore Napper, or I'm on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love if you can give me a like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe, stay kind, especially in the comments. Bye.